Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. Parker to the left, one back is Mo on second down and nine, and Joey back to throw. A couple of quick steps, throw, Parker's over, and it's Sammy's got it inside the 20, 15, still his feet, he's gonna score! Sammy Parker would not be denied! Sammy should have been stopped at a 15, pushed away from one man, hit and breaks away at the 12, and takes it on in for the score. What a great grab, and then run by Sammy Parker. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. I think we could get used to this. Another convincing win for the Ducks. I'm Joe Johnsante, along with the coach and Mark Larson. Well, coach, three-game road trip. You win the three games by a combined 96 points. You happy? <laughs> I'm, I'm pleased. I have to admit, I, going on the road is always tough, but we made the most of it. Our kids got better, and I, I'm really pleased with where we're at right now. Coach, offensively, just really moving the ball at ease right now, and I don't know if that, I know it has something to do with the defenses that you're playing, but certainly Joey and the running game working in tandem. I agree, but I think it's more our offensive line. I really want to give them some credit. Uh, they've blocked very, very well. They've allowed us to run the football, which sets up everything else and protects Joey in terms of being able to pass when we want to. And now you come home, and all of a sudden, Oregon has the longest home winning streak in the country. You get a chance to add to that. Well, it'll, it'll be tough. Stanford's a good, very good football team. They suffered their first loss. Uh, you know, we just need to focus on ourselves, concentrate on getting better every week. That's been our motto. I'm going to hold the players to it this week. We'll talk about Stanford a little bit. Stanford uh, should have won that game yesterday, by the way. We'll talk about that in a while. But let's get to the first quarter highlights. Oregon and the California Bears on an unbelievably nice day in Berkeley, California. The coach leading his guys out there. I'd say, what do you think, coach? About 85, 90 on the field? It was close to 90. I know that. It was very warm. It surprised us a little bit. So Cal comes out with it. Igber stopped by Keith Lewis. Home ties him through the head there. And then uh, Kyle Bowler on third and three. He has a, or, uh, the little out, first of all, which sets up the third and three. A gain of seven. And on this play, Coach, Bowler could have run for the first down, decides to throw. Well, we're very fortunate. Again, they always, this is one of their staples on fourth or third down conversion situations. The, the quarterback on a movement outside the pocket run pass option. I was surprised. I'm glad he threw. So the Ducks hold, and uh, they get the ball and go to work. Maurice Morris left side for 10 yards, and then Harrington to peel, and it just clicking right off the bat, Coach. Yeah, again, when I saw Maurice get that full head of steam and hit him and drive through their DBs, that's, that's an awesome sign in the early plays in the game to give us a chance to get that offensive line moving forward. Gain of nine for Willis to the Cal 27. Ducks on the move. 27 first down. Joey up under center. We'll go back and throw again. Steps, pressure comes. He throws wide open. Willis falls down at the three, but it'll be first and goal. Or is that Maurice? It is nine, not number eight. We were able to sneak Maurice out of the backfield, actually. A play action pass. We've done with a fullback. And Maurice thought he was going to get hit, so it had to turn around. Unfortunately, knew he could have scored on that play. Great protection. Great throw by Joey. So Maurice doesn't get in, but uh, Joey Harrington, after this quick running play, sets up a, uh, another short dive for Harrington, and Joey adds to his touchdown total on the very next play. Joey under center to see if he just keeps it, and he does, and dives it in easily. Harrington over his left side. They actually had 12 men on the field on the previous play. I think Mo would have scored otherwise. But we got down to about the three-inch line, so it would have been a one-and-a-half yard mark, so he stopped it, or uh, declined the penalty. Great line surge on that left side. Uh, our tight end tackle on that side just cleared the way for Joey. George Reister, nice down blocking there, and Oregon has an early 7-0 lead. So the Cal Bears come back to Igber. He's going to get up the field for 14 yards. But uh, they really don't have any sustained offensive production in this entire game and here bowler goes incomplete to lyman stevie moore with the coverage great coverage i was really pleased with the defense it came out ready to play uh great communication great focus out there all right then going for igber again through the airs this t the airway this time and incomplete and not a very good looking pass so cal punting again and uh not a very good punt at this and you're you're getting great field position taking advantage we had a chance. You know, their punter's very erratic. He picked some good ones, some bad ones. We knew that coming in. We were worried about maybe getting hit one of our blockers down the field. So we really uh, did a nice job on the punt team. Ducks make him pay for every mistake. Give it to Maurice coming outside. It's a block held up one man across the 40, 50, dragged down from behind and still on his feet inside of the bare 40 yard line. Great power running by Maurice. First of all, nice read to get outside. Nice blocking at the line of scrimmage. Then Sammy Parker 
get blocks for him, gets run over, blocks for him some more, and Mo breaks a couple tackles down the field. You see him get outside, his pads going north and south. Sammy's helping there and uh, gets Look rejected out. out to the side, but Mo just keeps chugging. So Maurice Morris back with it for a yard up the gut this time, but still things are going well for the Ducks, and then Oregon decides to go through the air for another touchdown. To the left, one back is Mo on second down and nine and joy back to throw a couple of quick steps throw parker's over at her and sammy's got it inside the 20 15 still his feet he's going to score sammy parker would not be denied great job by joey and sammy this is one of those communication things of seeing the coverage and adjusting the route on the run joey hits him in stride here nice job by sammy to come in and then it's all sammy he just makes people miss got the speed to break tackles and then just accelerate away from everybody Tell you what a confident Sammy Parker is going to be dangerous for the rest of the Pac-10 right now. Ducks, seven and a half minutes into the game, 14 to nothing lead. After roughing a kicker penalty, the Ducks kick off from the 50, and Joe, down the ball. I was thinking about downing it or running it out, of just a little indecision. So I'm really, really disappointed in my performance. I wouldn't run it out without pads on, I don't know. <laughs> Bears give the ball back. Knocked into the air and intercepted. Ducks have the ball. Lewis to the right side, 30, and down at the 27-yard line. Great break on the ball by Steve Smith. Just a fantastic timing. If you watch this, play action pass, ball's delivered, and right at the point of touch, immediate contact by Steve, breaks it up, blows it up in the air. Uh, Keith Lewis right there to pick it off and, and get us some great field position. Thought he might score. 16 yards on the return. The Ducks are in business again. So, Ontario Smith into the ball game, up the middle for a tough six yards. Just working his way and getting some yardage nice job on that because that was sort of a busted play they had taken that away he cut back up inside did a nice job and it's joey another quick slant jason willis nice catch guys all over him right there five yards down to the 16 and it's ontario three more tough ones and everything going forward at this point moving the ball that was a tough catch by jason willis that was a great catch because he was going to get hit as soon as he caught it and then another great catch justin peel nice job he was covered well joey put the ball where only he could catch it so right now, the Ducks are really making it look easy. Mixing it up, Ontario Smith on the option for six yards, down to the Cal two-yard line, and it's Ontario who gets the payoff. Josh Rogers, it is. Triple tight end. Here's Peel in motion. Backs out of the eye, and turn of the eye back. Ontario with a pitch. Ontario going left. He'll stroll into the end zone. Great blocking by the left side of our line and our full back. I don't know if you get a chance to see it from ground level, but uh, we really cave in that left side, seal it off, and Ontario basically trotting into the end zone. Nice job. Well, the Ducks lead 21 to nothing. Eight play, 27 yard drive. Still three and a half minutes left in the quarter and large contingent of Oregon fans down there. We'll talk more about that later, but they're pretty happy at this point. Jared Siegel, very good on kickoffs again. Awesome on kickoffs. I think, you know, all but two went into the end zone and the couple were mishandled like this, creating great field position for us. So the Bears just, let's face it, not looking very good right now and Oregon taking advantage all the way. Igber for four, Mitchell, and uh, Moretti in there for the stop. Linebackers played well, Coach. They did a great job. Really, again, with all the sets we saw, the various screens and that type of thing, uh, our entire defense played extremely well in terms of communication and coverage and, and leverage assignments. Then it's uh, Bowler going to try it deep this time, and Rasuli Webster there. Remember, he had an interception as a freshman a couple years ago down in Berkeley, so loves that field, I guess. Third and two now, and uh, Chris Tetterton coming up to make the play, and you know, 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter, Coach, and a lot of attention on the offense, scoring a lot of points, but the defense just shutting them down. I was really pleased. There were two things, us running the football as we did and our defense just playing great and not giving up very many first downs. I'm not sure if they had any first downs, so it was awesome performance by our defense. 21-0, the score after one. Of course, the Ducks slowed down just a little bit in the second quarter in Berkeley, but they put the nail in it at the end of the period. Mr. Touchdown again. That and more when Oregon football with Mike Bellotti continues right after this. This Oregon sports football with Mike Bellotti is sponsored by Rife's Home Furniture and Steelhead Brewery. Welcome back, everybody. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. Polls are just out. Oregon stays at five in the AP poll. UCLA leapfrogs you, but that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. Just a little tidbit for you. Playing very well right now. 21-0 going into the second quarter. Yeah, the most important thing for us, I think, is to not think the game is over, to continue playing with great intensity. 
that's the biggest thing for us at that point. When you get that 21 lead, you always worry about will the players relax, and, and we didn't. All right, let's get right into the uh, second quarter highlights and see how they did not relax, especially on defense. And uh, again, three touchdowns in the first quarter. Kind of a tough act to follow for you guys, but the Bears start with the ball. And again, the defense playing well, and it doesn't get any better for the Bears. Ball under center, back split behind him. Two receivers wide right, and he'll roll right to throw. Gets some pressure, now looks downfield, and will turn it up and run. Booms across the 35 and fumbles the ball, but the ground cannot cause the fumble. They're giving it to Oregon. They're giving it to Oregon. <laughs> Great hit by Kevin Mitchell here. We lose contain. You watch this. The ball is definitely out. You just can't see it from that other side of the field, but comes out right there on the contact. There it is. Ball's bouncing. Rashad Bowen right on the spot. And a great hit by Kevin again. I come back to that. Mitchell created that. He's really been knocking people around lately, just big time. Okay, so Oregon gets the ball back. And Joey Harrington, going to try and make him pay early, goes to the end zone. This looked like a touchdown. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get that. Might have just got tipped away at the end. I know Sammy wanted to have a chance at it again. That happens, but uh, they'll get other chances. Here we go. Maurice Morris then trying to ground and running very hard. Guy just holds onto the shoe right there. Tough five yards. Harrington to Keenan Howery, and the streak is alive, and a little personal foul, I believe. On the duck, so moves it back. And all of a sudden, you had a great scoring chance, and you move him back, and you fumble the ball. Not a great drive. No, and I was very frustrated. I, I got mad at the offense right there. Defense does a great job, gets the ball back, and then we have a negative drive punctuated by penalties and a fumble. That's terrible. That was the first fumble of the year by an Oregon running back six games in, which is amazing. It's a nice, yeah. Well, we have veteran running backs, veteran quarterback, and that's the way it should go. Bowler went deep to triple coverage, then Igber up the middle for two yards to the 46. Moretti on the stop, and then he's incomplete again, and another three and out. Great job by the defense, just being in the right spot. Good pressure, good coverage. So, Ducks get it back, and it's Sherrington to Howery again. Nice move, and another six yards to the 21, and back to that man, Sammy Parker, once again after that. Parker and Howery to the right. Willis wide left on third down and four. Joey to throw. Protection there. Throws. Parker with a grab and gets free. 30-yard line. The 40. 50. Inside of the 45 and then out of bounds. Up in the bare 44-yard line. Good tight coverage. Joey puts the ball low and away where Sammy can get it. And then he can bust away here. Tight cover. You can see him right here. Just that quick step. And then he's gone off to the races. Great speed. Great mobility. Makes the first guy miss. Cut back, and then gets more yards after the catch, after contact. 72 more yards for Parker. He's really uh, really emerging right now. 160 last week, so he's really on a roll to the Cal 44. Smith for three, and then Joey Harrington's going to throw, and a little scramble here. This is where you cross your fingers, Coach. Well, he did a nice job. That was They covered the thing down the field. Joey scrambled again for the first down, gets down, doesn't take a hit. Pretty heads-up play by a senior quarterback. Now, I don't know you love to see him slide in that situation there. Then Ontario, three tough yards up the middle. And they're going for the knockout punch here. We we'll try the halfback pass. Unfortunately, they cover it very well. We've got to work with Ontario about throwing the ball away and protecting the football both. Uh, big negative play, unfortunately, at that point. So it's a loss of 10 out of field goal range at the 37, trying to move it up a little bit. But Joey Harrington's pulled down for no gain right there. And Jose Arroyo comes in. Now, a lot of guys would just help their average and send this through the end zone. This is a great punt and a lost art. Great job. And we've been working a lot and telling him that he's got to get it there. We had a guy there, too, even if it had bounced in, but he puts it out up at the four-yard line. Awesome job by Jose. All right, so let's see if the Cal Bears can do anything on offense. And Joe Egbert gets him out of the hole in a hurry. His biggest, their biggest play, really, of the day. Yeah, and we, we were standing around too much on defense on that play. I think a lot of times you just got to cut it loose down there and really force the issue. So, Bowler, this time going to roll out again. You can see the play develop, and Keith Lewis just plants him. Great job. We, he played that very, very well. We talked about that as one of their favorite things, that roll out with the quarterback at the back in the flat. Bowler to uh, Sharon Arnold for 15 yards, and then it's... They're going to try the draw play, and this slow developing. You can see this one happening all the way, and your defense not full. Nice job there. We were coming with a little bit of pressure, and we hit it right in the face. That was a nine-play drive, and they really just don't threaten to score the entire time. Short completion here sets up a third and nine. Then they go back to the throw again, and your secondary is just right there every time. This one, very close, Coach. 
Great job. Uh, Steve Smith coming off the edge in a corner blitz. Got him. And uh, nice job by Steve. He gets there usually when he comes. And on fourth down, the ball knocked down. And Oregon gets to take over. That was Darrell Wright getting a mid on it. And that ends that. The Ducks take over. Harrington now looking for Keenan Howry. Look at the great move by Keenan. Just working his way up the field. Gets out of bounds. Gets the first down. I like Keenan's shifty. That play on the third down conversion he made on that screen was a great play. Didn't get a chance to talk about it, but awesome. Incomplete that time to Morris. Third incompletion in a row, and so the Ducks punt again. The Bear 12 high snap, but he brings it down. Booms a very, very high, but a short kick. Carmel makes the drop. The ball's loose, and I think Oregon got it. It sure looked like it. Yep, they do. Ducks have it at the 24-yard line. That was not Jose's best punt. It, it got up high, didn't turn over, so it actually dropped back away. Great job by Marley Tucker. You can see him backing out of there to, to avoid the two-yard <laughs> fringe there. And uh, we end up, that was the biggest play of the whole thing. Now, he could have got it. I think, actually, Wesley Mallard got it, as I, if I remember right. But awesome job by our, contain, our coverage teams. Kind of backing out of there on his backside, looked like. Not to get that call, a very good play. Incomplete right there to Peel. So Joey going to go back to Justin again, this time on the sideline, and why not? And then a very similar looking play on the very next play. And Coach, you could tell us after if it was the very same play. The 16s under center, back to throw. Joey steps up, looks, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Justin Peel. Good patience by Joey. This is a similar play we've used frequently uh, lately, play action to our two tight ends. He stays on Justin, again, puts this ball right there, and the guy falls down. I think Justin had body position and a good footwork to get in the end zone. So it's an 18-yard touchdown for the Ducks, and this one is getting kind of silly. It's 28-0 at halftime, but I know you've been in this situation before down there, and I bet that's what you told the kids in the locker room. Actually, I didn't. It's not, you didn't? It's, no, it's never okay. silly. I never told them anything about the other games we've had down there. I told them that we need to just continue to focus on playing hard, playing fast, and getting better. And, uh, and that both offense and defense had to keep control of this game. Now, Cal, did you expect to shut down that offense like you have been? Because, uh, you know, they scored some points in their last game against Washington. No, I was very pleased. I, that's what I said. The defense at that point, I told them how proud of them that I was, but there was should be no letdown. We need to continue to play with great intensity, great fury, and, and not preserve the shutout. You always, I don't, I'd love to have one, but the biggest thing is to play hard. So the Ducks are on a roll, 28-0. And when we come back at the half, those of you who were there, it was awesome. Those who weren't, we're going to do our best to show you what it was like. A record-setting road crowd for the Ducks. Amazing turnout in Berkeley. We've got that and more. Our football flashback with Steve Ash, Josh Wilcox coming up on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Oregon Football. Welcome back, everyone. All right, we tried to figure out, and I think we did, how many Oregon fans made it down to Memorial Stadium yesterday. It's a story problem, so listen very closely. Stadium seats, about 75,000. There are 44 equal sections. That's about 1,600 per section. Ducks had about eight packed sections, plus fans all over the rest of the stadium. So at least 12,000 Oregon fans in Berkeley. That is by far a new road record for the Ducks, and the fans were great. Part of it because so many Ducks are from the Bay Area, and so you have friends and family. The other, Oregon's success, and of course the third, the fact that the Pac-10 kept this game off TV. So great turnout and great memories for all who made the trip down to Berkeley. Great day for it as well. All right, now this week's Internet poll. A few cyberspace gremlins out there a week ago, so we asked the question again. Tell us which conference you think is the toughest. Remember, this is very important in those BCS standings, which will determine who plays in the National Championship Rose Bowl. Is it the Big 12, the Big 10, the SEC, or the Pac-10? Go to KZI.com, click on the Oregon Sports Network link, and place your vote. Results coming up next week on the show. All right, time now for our football flashback. We had to search high and low to find this guy, one of the most popular ducks ever, Josh Wilcox, also known as Seabass. He's in Kentucky at the World Wrestling Federation Training Center. He's working to continue his pro wrestling career. Well, Seabass had a big game against the Bears, three touchdowns way back in 95, and we caught up with him on the phone between the turnbuckles and the chair slams. Here's this week's football flashback. Scores the touchdown! Kenny Wade's gonna score! Oregon's gonna recover the end zone! Touchdown! 
having a lot of people from the Bay Area on our team makes it a big game for a lot of guys. And uh, we went down there and kind of put an offensive game plan together that showcased everybody. And luckily, I was involved in that a lot. Second and 11. Sam Graziani rolling, throws the screen the other way for the tight end Wilcox. 10, 5, touchdown Ducks. Graziani this time will put it up. Here's a screen to the tight end Wilcox. Wilcox to 15, Wilcox to 10, to 5, touchdown Ducks. Just running over people. Luckily, Graziani could see over his, his nose and throw it to me. You know, I'm always proud to say that, you know, we were part of history and uh, the glory days, you can never forget them. A sea bass, a little crack back on Love Graziani. All right, back to the game. Joey Arrington breaking loose and checking out early for the second week in a row, but not after doing some damage. Take you back to the bay on a spectacular day at Berkeley, California. This is the view from the top of the stadium. It doesn't get much better than that. More Oregon football with Mike Bellotti coming up right after this. Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti is sponsored by Rife's Home Furniture and Steelhead Brewery. You already know the Steelhead Brewing Company is the home of award-winning microbrewed beer. But did you know the Steelhead Brewing Company also has a great menu? There's fresh seafood, steaks, pastas, salads, sandwiches, and specialty dishes. Steelhead's Pizza is made from fresh ingredients and slowly roasted for optimum flavor. The Steelhead Brewing Company is a great place to relax with family or friends, have lunch or dinner, get into the game on TV, or just kick back. Fresh beer brewed here. The Steelhead Brewing Company. No matter how busy you are, there's always time to find great values at McDonald's. And now make time for our new McDouble sandwich. Two all-beef patties stacked with fresh lettuce and tomato, just 89 cents every day. Or our new McChicken sandwich with tender chicken, mayo, and crisp lettuce, also just 89 cents every day. Come in and get either sandwich in a $1.99 manager special. Put one, put two, put... Can you throw me the ball? <laughs> the Duck Shop, where real duck fans shop. All I want to do is to thank you. I'll bet you used to dream that someday you'd own a Mercedes Benz. Well, now you can. Let me introduce you to the all new C Class Coupe. It starts at just $25,595. This car is all Mercedes. Not only does it meet our high safety standards, but get this, it comes with a free scheduled maintenance for four years, 50,000 miles. The new Mercedes C-Class Coupe. Your someday, it's today. Come test drive the new C-Class Coupe at Mercedes-Benz of Eugene. Bradford's has the ticket to the best theater in town, your home. Bradford's is featuring an outstanding yet affordable eight-piece home theater system. Powered by a Yamaha Dolby Digital Receiver, you also get a Yamaha DVD player and six Paradigm speakers. A premier system at a matinee price, including six months no interest financing and ten free DVD rentals from Flicks and Picks. Don't just hear movies, feel movies at Bradford's Home Entertainment, the true home of home theater. Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti is sponsored by Bradford's Home Entertainment and Bymart. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Oregon with a 28-0 lead going into the third quarter. Let's jump right into those highlights. Let you see them for the first time for a lot of you folks who weren't able to watch this on TV. A hot day. The big fog working out for you. Yeah, it was, it was warm, and it, we talked about hydrating all game long. Probably about 95 degrees down to the field, and we certainly felt it, and we didn't have pads on. So, guys, is starting out pretty well, though. Maurice Morris for nine, and then uh, no room to go here, so it's third and two, and looks like the option you love this play in this situation. Well, for us, it gives us a chance. Unfortunately, on this one, we get strung out a little bit. I think Joey sort of closed his eyes there, needed to cut back, and got some blocking, but we were coming up just a little bit short. So the Ducks have to punt. After coming up short, Jose Arroyo on this play, a missile. 56 yards, and Sammy Parker almost makes a great play. 
Yeah, this this ball bounced straight up. As soon as it breaks the plane, though, it is a touch back and forth. Great play by Sammy Parker. But great body control. Got it back out. Down on the one. Unfortunately, couldn't stay. All right, so at the 20, Cal takes over. And how about Steve Smith coming up? Nice job coming up there, filling that very well. Bowler this time to Slopper, and he's going to get him for 10 yards. At this point, you're just keeping him in front, though. Rashad Bowman, a good sure hand to tackle. Yeah, we're not going to get beat deep. Uh, you know, we don't want to give up anything, but they got to make sure that they can execute. All three linebackers coming in here. Look at that. Three M's. Mallard, Moretti, Mitchell. Truly mayhem. Very nice. Getting in on that. Defense playing great. And uh, Bowler again. Nowhere to go with this one. Has to throw it uh, into the Oregon sideline, so... Oregon offense takes over at the 37, and right back to the ground with Maurice. Yeah, we felt we could control the ball on the ground, line of scrimmage. Nice job by Joey Forster on that block, and then Maurice cutting back. And then Harrington puts on his track shoes. Harry and Parker out to the right. Maurice Delone back for Harrington, second down and 10. And back to throw Joey, a little half roll right stops. Pressure comes, gets away. Now he can run. Look out if he's got the speeding goal ways. 50, the 40, Harrington to the 30, and out of bounds. They came with pressure up the middle. The middle linebacker blitzed, and we didn't pick him up, so Joe had to step up. When he stepped up in the pocket, he soon sort of the, the Red Sea parted right there, and he took off. And they were in man coverage down their way, so it, it was great because there's nobody there to take the quarterback. So Joey's off to the races, gets as much as he can, and then gets out of bounds, which is fine. 41-yard gain, so it's really like running the 40. We timed it in about eight seconds. <laughs> I'm giving a bad time about that. That's good. That was a great run. Joey puts him in position again. So here we go. Ducks set up at the Cal 22. That was Morris for six. And then Morris for three on the left side. And then going to give it back to Maurice Morris once again. Maurice in the backfield. Joey under center. Joey with the ball. Give it a ball up the middle. He's got the first down. Outside of the 10. He scores. 5-3 touchdown. Maurice Morris. Great job by our offensive line here. You see Justin Peel coming back on an inside crackback block. And then Mo reads it perfectly, makes the last guy miss. Nice move into the end zone untouched. Awesome job. Little shake and bake, and it's 35-0. If it wasn't over before, it certainly looks that way now. 81 yards for Maurice on the day. Oregon fans having a great time. And Cal just to continuing to go nowhere. How about this? Bowler the Gets his own pass. pass? I didn't know where the ball went. He's got the catch, he's got the fumble, and he's got the recovery. He's got everything. <laughs> it's rare that all that happens on one play with the same guy. Seth McEwen went down. What's his status? Hurt his shoulder, sprained his shoulder, and we're hopeful it, it won't be too serious, but it was pretty painful right then. All right, Bowler then uh, complete to somebody other than himself this time. And a pickup of uh, a couple. It's uh, third and seven coming up. Well, that was third and seven. That was a pickup of four. So, again, they have to punt. And, again, you have the ball back. And uh, just like last week in Arizona, really intent to run the ball in the second half. Well, we wanted, again, both Maurice and Ontario are powerful running backs that don't lose any speed over the course of the game. We wanted to get them on track. They did a great job. Ontario for 11 there. They go back to Ontario over and over and over and let him get some work in front of his family in from Sacramento, California. And I'd uh, like to see him get a lot of chances like this because eventually he'll break one, won't he? Well, and, and he does here in a, in a minute. But the most important thing, too, is that we kid him about, about conditioning because he carried the ball about seven straight times. I think it was Plum Tucker. This is the one he finally gets loose. Second down after the three-yard gain. Second and seven from the Duck 38. Harrington with the ball. A hand it to Ontario. Big hold into the middle. Cuts it outside. Now inside. He's off to the races. 40, 30, 30, 25, and down. Nice job again by our offensive line and by Ontario recognizing the seam. We're just pounding away up there, hoping for a crease, and he gets one this time, cuts it back through, makes a guy miss right there. Nice blocking downfield by Keenan Howery, and we're off to the races. So Ontario, 78 yards on the day to go with Moe's 81. 37 of them right there. Then the Ducks, how about a little razzle-dazzle it to take it into the end zone? I'll give Ontario a break. Josh Lyon offset in the backfield. Joey under center at the 25. Pitch it back to Ontario. Here's the reverse to Howery. Good play. 30 outside. 20, 15, 5. Touchdown, Howery. And a block by Joey Harrington. Frees up Howery for the touchdown. 
Great execution by our entire offense on this play. We get them in the bear, and they're coming hard off the edge, which is the perfect time to run the reverse. Nice call by Jeff Tedford and his staff. They execute the handoff flawlessly. There's Joey picking the guy. Cut does a nice job of cutting down the big line. And then Keenan makes two guys miss right there. And again, right here about the five yard line, just high steps it through. Nice job, great execution. Well, it's 42 nothing at the end of the third quarter. And uh, coach, again, kind of like last week, again, you still have a whole other quarter to play and you, you feel like this one's done. Well, I felt better about this game, though, because we've been playing great on defense, had not been given up big plays. We had really had the game in hand and check, and I, I felt like we needed to continue, but it was going to be another opportunity for us to get young people into the game, get them more experience. You also had a situation where, like Mo and a few of the other guys, you just couldn't take them out because you don't have any other players there, and you don't want to waste Ryan Shaw's redshirt year. Well, again, yeah, we don't, and, and we were wanted to run our fullbacks. We got him in a little bit late, but I thought, too, that we didn't have a back over 100 yards. We could keep those two kids in and let them work it a little bit. Well, the game is basically over for the second week in a row, but as Mark said, a great opportunity to get everyone's uniform dirty in this one. Some new defenders in there, some guys making some big plays. We've got that and more when the coach's show returns. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti is sponsored by Gardner Floor Covering and your local Chevy dealers. Timeless designs. Enduring quality. Personal service. Gardner Floor Covering is proud to offer the exquisite patterns, rich, saturated colors, and captivating designs that is Karistan, America's most recognized maker of carpet and rugs. Gardner Floor Covering offers the area's largest collection of finely crafted wool carpets from Karistan, Woolshire, and Unique, just to name a few. Gardner's is Wools of New Zealand's exclusive elite dealer. Visit Gardner Floor Covering and feel the difference. Peggy Sand and Gravel is the area's leading site work contractor. We have provided professional site work services for some pretty impressive projects in our community. Building sites, subdivisions, streets, utilities, you name it. When you see our red trucks, you can rest assured it's a job well done. Peggy Sand and Gravel, rock solid in our community. Everywhere you look, people are going out of their way to recommend Ward Insurance to those they care about. Because Ward offers expert assistance with a level of care you've never experienced. Ward Insurance, commercial and personal insurance since 1953. Ward Insurance, the referred choice. It's the store-wide clearance sale at Rife's Home Furniture. Check out these great deals. A five-piece dining set, Rife's clearance price, only $5.99. A comfortable sofa, just $3.99. This cherry Windsor bed, only $3.99. Take these rocker recliners, just $2.69. Get Rife's six-month same-as-cash financing during the store-wide clearance sale at Rife's Home Furniture, Good Pasture Island Road, next to Kmart in Eugene. The affordable way to a beautiful home. Fall savings are as close as your neighborhood Vimart. Make cleanup easy with Vimart plastic trash bags. Choose from tall kitchen bags, trash, or lawn and leaf bags. In assorted sizes, get two boxes for just $7. Treat your pet to Northwest Royal Dry Cat Food. The 20-pound bag is just $5.99 at Vimart. Get tough laundry clean with Cheer Laundry Detergent. Get the 166-ounce box for only $10.99. Cash in on these and other great fall savings. Sale prices end October 17th at your Northwest neighborhood Vimart. Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti is sponsored by Bradford's Home Entertainment and Bymart. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Oregon with a commanding 42-0 lead as we head to the fourth quarter. All right, time to get the uh, backups in and uh, get them going, and time to get out the sunscreen. I'll tell you what, people getting baked out there, and little uh, mini Joey Harrington having a great time with Dad. Just. Just want to get this one over with, and a good way to do it is to run the clock, and Maurice Morris 
Don't like that. I'm, I know you don't like that. No, it was a bad choice. We had the fullback got this guy down. Most should have kept going. He tried to cut back, and they didn't secure the ball. That's unfortunate. So the only question really remaining is whether it's going to be a shutout or not. Bowler loses four yards. Good pursuit by Rasuli Webster, who played a very good game. Great play by Rasuli. He took on the, the lead blocker and then went through him to get the quarterback. Bowler barely gets that one off before getting sandwiched. 28 yards, and all the Bears are in business, but Keith Lewis... Yeah, unfortunately on that play is when Keith hurt his ankle, got rolled over by one of our own players and a guy that was trying to block him, and uh, hopefully he'll be healthy and get back quickly. Do we have any idea yet what he's looking like? Don't know. Probably have x-rays today, and then probably know more based on the swelling tomorrow. You see here a great hit by the defense as Bowler looked like he might get in the end zone, goes up over the top, and Steve Smith just... Steve was right there, had to jump over Suley Webster's off balance, and Steve lowered the boom. Well, the Bears do get into the end zone. Gives their fans something to cheer about. Joe Igber on a little pass play here. And, well, the fans uh, thought, uh, thought they were very funny, didn't they, Joe? The yeah, there were very many of them left. But they were <laughs> chanting overrated, which they were. It was more like respect for your team because that's such a popular cheer, and they were chanting overrated and respect with you, to your team. So it was kind of funny. I'll pass on any comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> so Oregon uh, taking care of uh, the Cal Bears for sure, getting some other guys in. Cy Alamon with the catch. Nice job. Good throw and catch. Jason Fife rolling this time, looking for uh, Paris Warren, and I know Paris wants this one back. Yeah, too bad. Uh, Jason slipped just as he threw it, so the ball had, didn't have quite as much on it, but Paris you know, probably took his eye off and wanted to start running first. So the team's traded punts. Oregon back with it now. Maurice Morris, again, this is where you normally wouldn't have Mo in the game, but because you don't have anybody else. That's true. We're alternating he and Ontario. So Morris up the middle for another five yards and uh, just keeping that clock moving. Absolutely. Going to run the football. We're doing a great job. Unfortunately, Mo trips, and I'm not sure if uh, our quarterback tripped him or he just uh, got his feet crossed up. Under center. Third down and 11 to the Bear 24, and back to throw five. Sets up, looks, here's the screen, and it's caught by Maurice off to the races. 15, 10, inside of the five, and first down, Oregon. I think Mo was a, a man on a mission now because he felt bad about that fumble. He's going to come back. He does a great job here of dragging a guy. Right there, the guy gets him, and Mo just keeps dragging for another five to seven yards. Great execution on the screenplay. 19-yard gain down to the five. And here, Jason Fife would have had the touchdown here, but a holding penalty moves it back. So then you're going to give it to Maurice Morris. He talked about a man on a mission. Check out this run. To the left, and there's a give them to delay to Maurice inside of the five, to the three, to the two. He got it in. Did he give it to him? Yes. Touchdown, Maurice Morris. This is a this is a great run. It's good blocking, but it's a better run. It's just Mo saying, I'm not going to be denied. I'm going to get in that end zone. Cuts back, rolls, spins, drives, brings it in the end zone. Great job. Mo's second touchdown of the day. And the extra point was blocked, so it was 48 to 7 at that point. You still got about seven and a half minutes to go. So the Bears finally make a change at quarterback. Holt Frederick complete for 19 yards. And poor California, the turnover bug hits him as well. And back to throw. Straight drop back, sets up, pressure comes, steps up and throws. It is intercepted up to 43 of Oregon. Nice pressure by Daryl Wright coming off the edge. This is the tip drill. Uh, Tyrone Tomlin gets a little hand on it, and then Marley Tucker, great catch, right? Johnny in the right spot. First interception for the young freshman, and uh, not the last, as we'll see later. Matt Floberg going with the big boys, huh? Well, again, we're trying to get at rest Ontario and Mo. You know, we don't really want to have them in there. Almost a great completion. Nice throw. Just couldn't quite handle that uh, to Josh Rogers. Would have been big for Josh Rogers. Uh, getting a little extra work. Doing a good job blocking for you, too, in three tight end sets. Absolutely. So Cal deep in their own territory. And uh, Hulk, Trezor, Hulk Fredder runs it out. Flushed out. Ramon Reed had the tackle there. The completion here for 14 yards. Marley Tucker on the stop. It's just garbage time, Coach. Well, yeah, I, you know, I hate to say that. It's just it's time for us to get some good experience and make some tackles. Make sure we keep them out of the end zone. Well, Tucker on the tackle there again. Then a fourth down play. And another completion for Cal. Down to the 26-yard line, and that's where Tucker says that's enough of that. Uh, first down at the Duck 26, straight drop back to throw. Pumps wants to go deep down the left-hand side. It is intercepted. And coming up at the 10-yard line and stepping out about just short of the 10-yard line is Marley Tucker. 
Marley did a great job of playing over the top of this, almost sort of baiting the quarterback, and then great leverage. Comes from behind, just steps in front, makes the interception, great catch, and he gets up a couple yards up the field. So 48-7 to the final. The players feeling very confident about how they've been putting it together right now. They're pleased with how they're completely dominating the teams they're playing. They get a little bit of work for some of the other guys down low, but when it's all said and done, a pretty satisfied group of Ducks. Well, that's what really what we're trying to do. Uh, first couple games of the season, we waited. We responded to what the defense did to us. And this week, and, and last week especially, we've taken it out. We've put it to them right away. That, that's what we're trying to do. Get our momentum part early. Let us dictate the tempo. And uh, we did that again today. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, we kind of figured that they're going to try to um, try to stop us inside. You know, Coach said, just go in there and run hard and, and get whatever they give you. I believe that, you know, everyone everyone kind of got the rhythm of the offense. You know, we run the ball, we pass the ball. So it's kind of hard to stop this offense. Uh, yeah, you know, that's what Coach T said, uh, you know, in last night's meeting, we got to be patient with the run, you know, they're going to they gonna blitz and bring that uh, device guy in, and uh, we just got to be patient with it, things are open up, and that's what things did today. We've done some really good stuff, we've uh, turned field position into the points, and, uh, you know, there's a couple times where we let it get away from us uh, in the second quarter where we could have put it even more on, but we... We didn't do so well, but uh, you know, for the most part, we've been doing really well, and the uh, offense is really clicking. O-line is doing awesome. Joey's having time. You know, we're running the ball. It's just, it feels fun. I mean, these are these have definitely been the two funniest games I've been a part of. Yeah, so defense came together. Um, we're starting to show that uh, we're a number five team. We're all starting to gel together, and we're starting to put points up, and we're starting to play as a unit. Well, Coach Ali already been stressing. You know, we need to come out, and we need a breakout game. And, uh, you know, it's coming into the sixth game of the season, and, um, you know, starting the second half of the season, and uh, we want to start on a good point. You know, and uh, we came out, we executed the game plan real well. Everybody fed off our emotions. You know, we had a good crowd with us, and uh, we took care of business. Well, Coach, you talk about getting better every game, but when you win by 41, I mean, how many things can you pick out that you say, well, I wish we would have done that better? Well, there'll be a couple things. I'll find something. <laughs> I, I think overall, though, it's very, very pleased. I think this was our best complete game of the season, offense, defense, and special teams, because we controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. We ran the ball, did not allow them to run, and overall, and didn't give up the big explosion plays we have in the past. Can you talk briefly about Joey Harrington and what he's doing? He's not having to have the, the 45 throws or 50 throws. He's just been efficient. Uh, the incompletions are hardly incompletions. They might be... Uh, Ball's thrown away, but he's just doing every single thing right on the field right now. He's playing very good football. He, again, is operating the offense. He's leading this team. He's making plays at the quarterback position. And you're right, we're not having to throw the ball 30 or 40 times because we're running the ball. So we're throwing 20 to 25 times a game, which is absolutely fine with me. And, of course, Duck fans are going to love to see Joey and the rest of the Ducks. Finally, the Ducks are coming home. And guess what, folks? The Ducks have the longest home winning streak in the nation after Florida State's loss yesterday, and they put it on the line next week against the Stanford Cardinal. We'll get into that next on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti is sponsored by Gardner Floor Covering and your local Chevy dealers. Welcome back. Week six in the Pac-10 in the Rose Bowl. Deshaun Foster running rough shot over the Huskies. Set a school record 301 rushing yards. Third best in Pac-10 history. UW will not be back at the Rose Bowl this season. 35-13 losers. Down on the farm, number 23, Stanford. Coming back twice from 14-point deficits against Washington State. Randy Fasani, couple scoring passes, but the Cougars get a couple scores via defense and special teams. Jeremy Bohannon on the block punt. Cougs 6-0, 45-39. And Corvallis, signs of life for the Beavers. 28 points in the first half. Cole Clawson gets a hand on the punt. Kenny Farley gets it in the end zone. Beavers win 38-3. They've won three straight over terrible Arizona. All right, the Ducks don't have to get on a plane this week, which is just great. They've been three weeks in a row on the road. Coming home to Autzen, where 23 in a row is the longest home winning streak in the nation and three away from tying the all-time Pac-10 record. It will not be easy against the Stanford Cardinal. As we showed you a little bit ago, Randy Fasani can do it. He throws the ball up. Got big receivers that can go and get it as well. They should have won that game against Washington State yesterday, and they can put up a ton of points. Head coach Tyrone Willingham knows the challenges his team faces when they come to Autzen. First thing, and you, you have to be most accurate about really what the challenges are, because sometimes you can deceive yourself and be illusioned and not really hit the mark. Uh, first thing is they have a great team. That is challenge number one. Uh, number two, great coaching staff. Uh, number three, they have a tremendous fan base that loves the Ducks 
and makes it very difficult for other teams to perform within the confines of that stadium. And pretty tough for you to prepare for this team because you haven't seen them in quite a while. We haven't played them in two years. They're an improved team, much faster overall. Uh, defense has improved. They're running the football, I think, over 200 yards a game on the ground. Randy Fasani, veteran quarter, they, they present a lot of problems. How about just coming home? I bet your kids would be excited to do that. No question. We, it's great to be home. Autzen Stadium will be rocking. We're not quite done yet here on the show. When we return, a closer look at one duck who for sure will play and work on Sundays. We'll tell you about that on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Oregon Football with... Welcome back, everyone. You know all the guys who get all the glory. Harrington, Howry, Morris, Bowman, and others. But you all know where it starts for the Ducks, right in the trenches. Well, remember Green Bay's Reggie White? They called him the Minister of Defense for the Packers. Well, the Ducks have a Minister of Offense in, of sorts in Ryan Schmidt. You know the saying, he'll work on Sundays? Well, Joey Harrington will work on Sundays in the NFL next year. Maurice Morris will work on Sundays. Ryan Schmidt will work on Sundays as a pastor in the inner city. I've thought about a lot of different things for um, possibility would be like pastoring an urban church that, that really focuses on like urban development with spin-off corporations and stuff like that. Schmidt is one of the most successful linemen in Oregon history. Nearly a straight-A student majoring in business and a first-team academic All-American. He's a team leader and the anchor of Oregon's excellent offensive line. He's a prime candidate for a future working in stadiums, making hundreds of thousands of dollars. And when the NFL team calls... The way things are headed now, um, I think I'd politely decline. I mean, football football has been great. I love football, but uh, I'm not so sure my joints do. <laughs> and and I don't really feel like it's my, my calling. I don't feel like I'd be um, fulfilled if that's what I were to do. Think of Schmidt as a one-man wrecking crew on the football field and as a one-man urban renewer off it. Whether it's a church or other organizations that, that, that set up programs to, to just meet the needs of these people, basically, I mean, their physical needs, their social needs, and, but then also kind of the cornerstone of all that would be their spiritual needs. That is where his business sense comes in. If your church grows and you do spin off different um, kind of organizations, for example, a, a credit union or even, like, say, a housing development, that uh, where you can help people in a certain setting afford a place to live where they otherwise, otherwise may not be able to. Schmidt has been making believers around the Pac-10 for four years. The fury he plays with is well known among conference opponents. And just because he plans to be a pastor, don't think that drive and desire will disappear. In fact, quite the contrary. Whatever you do, you need to have passion for. And in football, you can obviously tell just the passion and, and playing hard and playing snap the whistle and, and being intense out there. And um, <clears throat> in ministry, I mean, I want to handle it the same way. You know, just because I'm doing ministry doesn't, a lot of people have a picture of Jesus as the lamb, you know, but he's also the lion. And whatever you do, you got to do it with intensity and with passion. And I'm not going to be, you know, knocking people on their butt when I'm doing ministry, but, <laughs> but at the same time, um, I'm going to be intense with it. Well, Coach, good teams need good character guys, and obviously he's one of them. Schmidt has really stepped up as a player. He's also stepped up as a leader in our locker room lately, too, which I've really enjoyed. Of course, Schmidt and the rest of the offensive line, the rest of the Ducks against the Stanford Cardinal. Finally, back at Austin Stadium next week, of course, we'll bring you all the action on Oregon football with Mike Bellotti next week. So, for the coach and Mark Larson, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week on Oregon football with Mike Bellotti.